Guys, it's Fonzie with DipYourCar.com, world famous peelable auto paints. And today we are doing the Ask Me Anything Q&A video volume two. And we have quite a bit of questions to buzz through today. So we're gonna knock them out one after the other. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Before we get started, where do I get these questions from? If you have a question, where do you submit it? Well, remember, we have our DYC community Facebook group. Once in a while, I'll put up a thread on the DYC community Facebook group, and I'll let you guys know that we're going to be filming another Q&A video, and then you can put your questions in there. So all these questions came over the past day or two from that Facebook group thread. So in the future, join that group and look out for this thread moving forward. So let's jump right into the questions. The first one, Efrain asks, what is your dream car to dip? My dream car to dip would be if I could somehow get my hands on a C7 RS6 Avant. I don't know what it is about that new RS6. I've always been an Audi fan. I've always loved the RS6. They're so unique and so rare, and we cannot get the new RS6 over here in the US, at least not right now. So if I could just magically have any car appear in my shop to dip tomorrow, I would get my hands on an RS6 Avant. Now what color I would do, not sure, that's, that's another question. Next question, Jesse asks, what advice would you have for entrepreneurs? Um, that is a very long and in-depth conversation, but the one thing that I can say is if you're thinking about starting your own business, A, make sure it's something that you're really passionate about, because if you're not passionate about it and you're trying to manufacture passion that's not really there, it's never gonna work, you're gonna fizzle out, and two, you need to be ready to put more time and more energy into it than you think is physically possible. Because you can't just run a business and start something from the ground up and try and put nine to five in. Say goodbye to your nights, say goodbye to your weekends, but if you're passionate enough about it, which goes back to the first point, that won't bother you at all. So the next question, Adam asks, what is your favorite Craig Mack song? Now this is an interesting question because Adam, you are the only person I know who physically owns Craig Mack albums on CD. So I would have to refer to you for an answer on that one. Ryan asks, what is the very first car or color you did a full dip on and how did it turn out? A lot of you guys know this already. The very first car I did a full dip on was the B8 S4 that we have, the white one, we still have it. It's kind of like the Frankenstein car. It's been through a thousand different colors. And it was matte black and I did it with spray cans. This was early 2011. Uh, how did it come out? It didn't come out very good. It really didn't. Did it come out pretty good for somebody dipping their car for the first time, using spray cans and not really having any idea what they were doing? Yeah, I mean, it was okay from that point of view. Uh, if you saw it today, mm, no, not good. Now, Brandon asks, how long does it take for you guys to dip a car from wash to finish? Now, that's a really interesting question. Um, normally, for a normal car, we will drop that car off to Gabe, our retail manager. He's the guy who preps the cars and gets them ready to spray. Uh, we'll drop them off that morning. Gabe will wash the car and mask the car that day, and usually it's ready to spray the next morning. It takes us anywhere between three to five hours to spray and break down a complete car. So I don't know, maybe in the 36 hour range for most cars. Eric, which car have you sold that you regret selling? Um, out of all of the cars that I've ever owned, there's only one car that I've ever regretted selling and that was my 2003 C5 RS6. I sold it in 2009 and I regretted selling it so much that I bought it back from the guy last year. Other than that, a lot of cars have come and gone and uh, I haven't missed any of them. Colin, how did you become an Audi guy? I actually remember the exact moment when I became an Audi enthusiast. Not a lot of people can pinpoint their exact moment. I remember exactly when it happened. It was 2004. I was on the highway on my way to my old job and a Sprint Blue S4 was next to me on the highway. And there was something about the way it was squat down. It had those fender flares on it. It just looked so aggressive and so compact. I just stared at it the entire way to work. And thankfully, 
he got off the same uh, exit that I did and I was just obsessed with it. I thought about that car all day long and about a week later I bought my first Audi which was a, a B7 A4. Okay, Josue asks, how tall are you? Adam looks tall compared to you. Uh, if I am ever fortunate enough to meet you guys, I don't want to be surprised because I imagine Adam as a very tall guy or is it that you're short? Uh, I've met a couple celebrities who surprised me when I met them. Uh, no surprises here. Adam is pretty tall. He's like 6'2", and I am not tall, but not too short. I'm 5'9", so kind of in the average range, but Adam's definitely got the height advantage. Eric asks, do you ever miss the beginning and early days of DYC? Also, where do you keep all the DYC cars? Uh, first off, I don't really miss the beginning, early days of DYC because back then we just didn't have all the resources that we have today. Today we have, uh, we have a lot at our disposal to make sure our customers and our viewers and our fans get the best experience possible. We have just a lot at our disposal and back then we were very limited. Um, back from when I was running the company out of my garage to the first shop to the first warehouse, it was a struggle because we were always trying to keep up and now we, we just have such a solid team behind us that we can just attack and destroy any challenge that gets ahead of us. So I don't really miss the beginning days for that reason. Where do we keep all the DYC cars? Um, a, 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 several of the DYC employees are driving some DYC cars. Um, there's five of them at my personal house and then we keep a bunch of them at the DYC retail center uh, so that we can, those are the ones that we change the color of very often like uh, the Evo, the A3 or the a4 and the S4, um, we just kind of mix and match those as we go. Scroggins Ray Charles, how and where do I go in order to buy DYC stock shares? Um, that's not really going to happen anytime soon, if at all, ever. Um, we've had some really interesting opportunities over the years to uh, be bought out by, whether partially or in full, by larger companies or to go public in, in these type of things. And it's never really been an interest of mine. I really like the idea that um, my, my gut and, and my passion and my drive have been able to really fuel where the company's been going. And it's worked so far. And my fear has always been if we sell out to another company, well, even partially, things are going to start to change. Maybe all the, the people that work at Dip Your Car, uh, may, they may not have jobs anymore. Um, or maybe the personal experience that each one of our customers gets, maybe that gets changed, or maybe the way we do videos changes. And I'm not really interested in changing any of that um, from a personal financial point of view. I've never been one to really kind of chase that type of a carrot. I really enjoy what we're doing and I'm comfortable with what we're doing, so um, stock shares aren't going to be something you're going to see anytime soon, if at all. Gilbert, Drake or Eminem? Uh, you know, I honestly don't think I have the street cred to answer that question. Um, if I had to, I'm assuming you're you're kind of going off of if they were to battle, which is kind of like the buzz right now on social media. I mean, you don't really bet against Eminem in that type of a situation. But again, I'm just going to kind of stay neutral there. Uh, my buddy Eric asked, what do you consider to be the most majestical creature in all of the land? And if you have one as a pet, what would you name it? Steve Fisher, is Autoflex safe to use on the cup craze? Is it safe up against people's mouths? Um, if you're not familiar with what the cup craze is, a lot of people are out there and they're spraying these Yeti thermoses or tumblers uh, with all these different colors. Some of them are using Plasti Dip, some are using Autoflex, some are using automotive paint, some of you are using different types of paints. Um, and specific to your question about Autoflex, is Autoflex safe to use on something you put in your mouth? I have no idea. Um, I can tell you for sure that that's not what it was made for. So if it is safe, I guess that's a benefit. If it's not safe, I wouldn't be surprised because it is a solvent-based product and solvents release for a very long period of time. Um, but again, that's not what it was made for. So if you're asking if an automotive coating is safe to put your mouth on, you know, I don't know. And uh, sometimes it's better to just kind of lean on the side of caution, I guess. That, that would be my suggestion. Angela has a question. When do you relax or take a vacation? You seem to be answering questions 
from early in the morning to very late at night, seven days a week. Um, that is accurate. And if you would speak to my wife, whose name is also Angela, um, she would answer this question in a very different way. I don't think she's a fan of my work schedule. Um, relaxing for me is, is not something I really look for too often. I do get to go to the gym every day. That's at least an hour of time for me to relax. Vacations are not something that I feel are within my realm of reality right now. We only started the company five years ago and we're busier now than we've ever been. I've always got something on the burner or multiple projects on the burner. I've never felt at least yet to where I feel like everything's calm and the dust has settled to where I'm gonna go off on a vacation for, for a week or so. If I did, at least at this point, my mind would be so screwed up about thinking about all the things that I should be doing at work, I wouldn't enjoy myself. So what I'm trying to do is get to myself to the point where the team is built big enough, the management team is built big enough to where I can step back and the project settle down to take a real vacation. And I think that would be, um, that would be the best bet for me. Wait until I can actually enjoy myself before I try to take a vacation. Now, as far as answering questions early in the morning, late at night, seven days a week, I mean, that's just the way I'm programmed. It's not something I try to do or something I force myself to do. If somebody reaches out to me and I am available, I'm going to answer them. Um, they're either customers or fans, um, and there's a reason why they're asking me a question. And yeah, Dip Your Car could be successful if I turn my personal messages off at 5 p.m. every day and not check them again till 9. That's not going to make or break the company. But will it help us grow that much more or will our, or will our customers ex have that much better of an experience if they can touch the CEO whenever they want? Yeah, and at least at this point, I don't plan on changing that. Brandon asks, how much do you bench press? Um, ironically, last Saturday, um, I actually set my personal record of flat bench uh, with no help and I got one super clean rep with 300 pounds. Um, my goal is to get 315 by the end of the year. And actually, ironically, Adam last week, who I work out with, set his personal record again at 225, which is a number he's been shooting for for years. So a lot of respect to him. He has come a long, long way. Adam asks, where do you see Plasti Dip in five to 10 years the way it's growing right now? Um, it's going to continue to spread. I mean, right now, Plasti Dip has become a household name. And knowing what I know about what they're working on, uh, it's only going to get bigger and better. I wish I can dive into more on that, but Plasti Dip has some huge things in the pipeline. Matthew, what is your favorite car to dip? You know what? It's still going to be the S4. And I'll tell you why. Because it's so freaking fast. It's super quick to mask. It's super quick to spray. And it's really, really easy to break down. We can knock out an S4 dip in like two hours and just not even be paying attention the whole time. I, whenever the S4 comes up in the queue, it's, it's very enjoyable for me because it's just in and out. TJ, are you going to add to the Dip Pearl Aerosol collection and what colors if so? Absolutely, we're going to add to that collection. Absolutely. We got nine out the gate the first run, which is a really good selection. And we've already got uh, quite a few more that we've got ready. Um, but we got to just take our time with it. You know, Plasti Dip is a big company and they like to do things carefully. We always like to do long-term testing ahead of time. So yes, you're going to see the Dip Pearl Aerosol collection grow for sure. Graham asks, can we please get a link to the DYC album? I've been trying to find all the songs from the videos, but I've only found two so far. We get this question all the time. I mean, I, I read every single YouTube comment that comes in, and very often are people asking what songs are from what videos. You got to realize, guys, what we do in order to make sure that we can monetize our videos is we have to purchase the licenses to these songs from certain databases. It's not like I'm just kind of cruising through iTunes and I find a song that I really like and I throw it onto a video. Um, and within these databases, when we purchase the license for a song, there's no name, there's no artist, it's just a serial number. So it wouldn't really do me any good to reply to a YouTube comment and just say, oh, the song is serial number this, because chances are you're not gonna be able to track it down but we are working on what we can do to compile a list of the songs together and then do like a promotional CD where we're not selling it, but just kind of giving it out to people because we definitely won't be able to sell somebody else's material. 
Matt Bush, will there ever be a DYC franchise store and would you give a life-size cardboard cutout of you for the front window of the store? Um, franchising is something that we're kind of still staying away from right now because there's really no reason for it. We have DYC resellers, we have DYC installers, we have DYC um, official retail centers that you can become if you meet the criteria. But as far as a franchise, nothing there yet. And if any of the resellers, um, installers or retail centers want a life-size cardboard cutout um, if you think it's going to help your business you're more than welcome to request it i'm sure we can make something happen for you alex what is your least favorite car you've ever dipped hands down the ferrari 458 hands down that car had so many curves to it and so many chicken wire inserts in it we had to dip it into different segments at a time and the masking took months and I'm, I'm not interested in dipping that car again. Sean, where are you from ethnicity-wise and hometown? What inspired you to lift weights? Was it from participating in a sport during school? Uh, I have come from an Italian Sicilian background um, and hometown is up in Long Island in New Jersey as well. And what inspired you to lift weights? I don't have a cool story for the inspiration there. I just started doing it when I was uh, 16 and then I just never stopped. I've been working out uh, almost every day since then without ever really taking a break. Connor, are you ever going to come out with other products other than shirts to represent DYC? That's a really interesting question. We have played around with hats and, and keychains and things like that. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where we need to hear from you guys if you want that stuff. Um, if you guys want to see DYC hats, let, let me know. Let me know in the DYC community, PM me on Facebook, whatever it is. Let me know you want to see hats because if we know that the, the demand is there, then we'll, we'll kick hats out for sure. Um, there's a lot of other things we've been playing with, but right now the t-shirts are kind of the mainstream for us. Robert, what was your first car and if it wasn't an Audi, what was it? My first car was not an Audi. It was a Mazda Protégé. And I liked it a lot. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a Mazda Protégé. And uh, I kept it for about three years before I, I switched over to that A4 that I mentioned. Um, but first car, Mazda Protégé. Never saw a dip. Way too early for that. Matt, who insures all of your Audis? Actually, every single one of our cars are insured by State Farm. Really have no reason why it's State Farm. It just happens to be State Farm. So John Chad asks, why do Smith machines exist and what is your position on heavy slow negatives? Um, actually, Smith machines, I, do, I think they do play a pretty critical role in the gym, specifically for when you're trying to isolate something. And I'll give you an example. On tricep day, if I want to do close grip bench press, I can do close grip bench press on a flat bench free weight. But if I do it on the Smith machine, I can get a substantially greater focus and isolation on my triceps. So I think if you use Smith machines for isolation purposes, they are really good. For, but for the larger compound movements like squats and deadlift and uh, barbell rows and bench press, I would stick to the free weights if you have the joints that are able to keep up with that. And my position on heavy slow negatives, dude, I switch, I switch everything in. I mean, I go from high volume, low volume, drop sets, um, pyramid sets, supersets. We'll focus on the negatives for sure sometimes. I think it's a matter of using a little bit of everything to con continue to confuse everything and your muscles need to adapt. So I would definitely rotate uh, slow negatives in for sure. Uh, Lewis, what happened to the 458? Dude, we sold the Ferrari a while ago. Uh, we did the first dip on it. We worked with Voss and Wheels. That was an awesome project. The thing about the 458 for me is it's very flashy and I'm not really big on driving flashy cars in that sense. Um, I know that sounds kind of hypocritical considering some of the colors that we put on our cars, but for my personal cars, the ones I drive, I mean the R8 is about as flashy as I can go and that's even still pushing it, but I made the exception because I'm such a huge Audi enthusiast. But I'm going to be dead honest, I just really didn't like the 458 that much. Um, you know, from the Porsche Turbo S and the, and the R8, I would just much rather drive those. The Ferrari for me looks great and it sounds great and it does handle really well, but, but that's about it. I did not fall in love with that car at all. And Mike, are you a glass half full or a glass half empty type of guy? 
uh, you know, I don't really think about stuff like that at all. Uh, realistically, all I think about is everything happens for a reason. And at the end of the day, more importantly, you can't change things that have happened. So if something happens that you don't like or that sucks, I don't really think about the full, half full, half empty. I just realize as quickly as I can that happened and there's nothing you can do to change it. So you're stuck at a point and you're either going to get from point A to point B in a way that you're really proud of and inspired by, or you're going to drag yourself through the dirt all the way through. So just try to make that conscious decision every time something bad happens to digest it and accept it and force yourself to move on. All right, we just knocked out over 30 questions. Remember, we do these a couple times a year, and if you wanna stay in the loop on everything, the DYC Facebook group is where you're gonna stay in touch with things like this. If you have any questions for me personally, you can get a hold of me on my Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. Uh, you can always send me an email if you want to as well. And of course, if it's product related, the customer service team will be all over it for you. It's Fonzie, I hope you guys enjoy this stuff. I'll see you in the next video.